and eventually I, I got a copy of my contract off him and I went through the contract and I found this clause that he'd, he'd put in and he stormed out of the boardroom. I'm John Newsom, and this is my Norwich City story. I always felt when I was at Leeds United that I was sort of on the periphery of the of the team, you know, I, even though I played quite a number of games that season, um, felt probably due to the fact that Howard Wilkinson had had me as a, a young lad at Sheffield Wednesday as well. So I always felt that I was, I was sort of like the one to get moved out or dropped and never really secured a, 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 a place in the first team. And um, we got into the summer and um, funnily enough, there was about, it was about two or three weeks before the move actually came about, but I had a phone call from a, um, a journalist who just said, um, I don't know if you're aware, but Norwich City have made a bid for you. And I think the club have accepted it. I just thought I'd give you the heads up. And, and that was it. I never heard another thing um, from the club, nothing at all felt, it had probably gone a little bit quiet, maybe. I don't know if there was any truth in it or not. Uh, and then one day I came home and there was an answer machine message saying um, from Howard's um, secretary saying, uh, the, the gaffer wants to speak to you. Can you come down and, and see him? Went down to see him and, and very bluntly just said, um, Norwich City have put a bidding for you. We've accepted it. Um, would you like to go and have talks? Um, and to me, I just thought, well, you know, the writing's on the wall there. What do you do? Do you stay and fight for your place and try and prove him wrong? Or effectively, I think his mind's made up if they've accepted a bid for you. Um, so I was more than happy to to go down to Carrow Road and, and, and meet with John Dean and, and Gary Megson. And, and, and it went from there, really. Premier League club, play good football. Just been in, in Europe the year before, got numerous good players. Um, I felt that it was a, um, a positive move. You know, I didn't think it was a like a backward step or I felt it was a really positive move for me. Um, and, and, it, and it proved to be that. At the time I got an agent, we, um, we arranged that I was going, going to go down the following morning. So we flew down from Manchester um, down into Norwich, John Dean was there to, to meet us, took us back to the um, to Carroll Road and showed us around Carroll Road and then we met with Robert Chase and um, we sat and had discussions and you know thrashed out, well we didn't really thrash it out as such, he, he Robert Chase told us what what we were getting and basically that, that was it really, there, were, there, was, there wasn't much uh, manoeuvring um, but he was he was pretty upfront and honest and just said, look, you know, we have a we have a pay structure. Nobody earns above what our you know our best players earn. We all we all earn the same. That's what we put you on. But we want you to to come here. Um, and it, it it didn't take me any time at all to to decide. Really, I you know I I enjoyed what I'd seen. Um, I liked the fact that. I was moving to somewhere that they that they wanted you, you know, rather than being at a club that obviously no longer wanted you. So, so there's that that was a big part of it for me. Um, and and yeah, thoroughly um, thoroughly enjoyed what I saw and, and was delighted to, to you know to make the move. Uh, you were Norwich's first one million pound player. Yeah, a bit bizarre, that isn't it? Um, I had no idea. I had no idea about it. We we had a press conference after I'd agreed to sign and I'd, I'd had signed that afternoon. And um, one of the journalists said, you know, what, what do you think about the fee? And, and I, I honestly just said to them, I have no idea what the fee is. Nobody's told me. And they said, well, you're the first million pound 
player that Norwich City's ever signed. And um, yeah, it was a great honour to be honest with you. But um, the, I think my answer on the day is, is true to today. That it, it was irrelevant to me really. It was, it was a that was a, a, a number that was decided between the two football clubs, and and that was between you know Norwich City and Leeds United really. And 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 I'd, I had no bearing on that. It, you know, there was nothing. I had no input into that at all. Um, they then asked me, you know, would it weigh heavy on my shoulders? Um, and I just felt that to be to be a, to be a club's record signing is you know was is a, is a massive compliment, I think. Um, and I just felt that there was then responsibility on my shoulders to to prove that it was money well spent. It was a, it was still a record in two thousand up to two thousand and five, a decade later. Yeah. Um, I think more to do with probably what had happened at the football club and the fact that we got relegated and, and you know, they struggled financially. You know, I don't think it was, I'd, I'd, I'd blown the bank or something, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, um, is it Dean Ashton who, who, who then broke it when they signed him from West Ham, didn't they? Uh, crew, yeah. Oh, from Crew. Sorry, from Crew, and then he went to West Ham. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, it stood for for quite a while, didn't it? Which is um, which is a bit bizarre, really, in this this day and age. Really nice guy. Thoroughly enjoyed working with him. My standing in the football club had, had altered some in somewhat. That you know, I got down there and and they, you know, I'd gone to a club that wanted me. They paid a record fee for me, and then he turned around and said, "I want you to be my captain," which was. A massive, massive honour for me, um, and I'd gone from being at a club where I was probably questioning whether I was going to play every week to a club that basically, you know, you you have to play every week. You're our captain, and and there were times when he actually pulled me in the office and 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 asked for my opinion on things, and you know, so it was a massive swing for me, but something that I really thoroughly enjoyed, and and. Um, just a really, really nice guy, and it was just a shame that it, you know it, we we didn't have the greatest of sort of like back end of the season because I thought he'd, his heart was in the right place, and and him and Gary Megson made it made a good duo, and um, I really enjoyed playing under them. It's a bizarre day, really. Um, the the backstory of it was that at the end of the f the previous season, uh, when I was at Leeds, we we'd gone on an end of season trip to Marbella. And on our first day there, Norwich City were there. So we were walking down the road and they were sat in a bar. And as you do, we'd all, you know, gone over and said hello and shook hands and met, it met, met a few other lads. And unbeknown to me, you know, five, six weeks later, I'm suddenly, you know, one of, their, one of the players there. So, um, so yeah, went into training. I think at the time it was before Coney. It was before the new training ground. So um, they took me up. Guy, I think Gary Megson took me in and and sort of like introduced me as such. But obviously, you know, the lads knew reading the papers who we'd signed and who we'd not signed. And um, and then it's yeah, then it's out and a bit of pressure on you. Really, it's a bit of a nervous day. Really, that you know, you you suddenly. Having to to show people um, that you're worth the money and and you know you brought in and, and and sometimes it's difficult because there's other lads there who you might actually be taking their place you know there's other centre halves there who will will welcome you with a smile and a shake of the hand but I suppose deep down inside of thinking you know you might be taking my spot so it, it, you know you've got to tread carefully but at the end of the day you're there to to do a job and. Um, you know, once I settled in, I felt like uh, you know it was uh, it was it, it felt like home to be honest. I think um, was it uh, Butterworth who was captain, and I think he'd and then he'd, he'd damaged his knee. He'd got that knee injury, and and I think that was obviously part of the reason that they went out and bought bought me. Um, but yeah, yeah, big, massive responsibility really. That you know you're walking into a dressing room full of strangers really who are now your teammates and um but the way that a dressing room works they were you know there were the jokers you know brian gunn people like that who were, who were quick to pull my leg you know uh calling me skip or or, or captain and 
you know, getting into your ribs a little bit, and and yeah, yeah, it's it's just one of those things you have to deal with, I suppose. But but looking back, it's um, yeah, quite a lot of a lot of pressure and um, a big weight on your shoulders, really. But I suppose that's why they, you know, they they, they deemed me. I was I was you know captain material, I suppose, because they felt that I could deal with it, and and hopefully I did. I think debut was Chelsea away, and I think it was a little bit of a you know, wake up call. It's 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 going to be it's going to be a tough season, um, but I felt we got we got enough um, about us. There were some exceptionally good good players at, at Norwich City, and and I was not surprised. But but when I got there and I played with them, um, it, it it was pleasing that, that, that you know they were they were good quality and 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 the way that they played. You know, we got the ball and we passed the ball. We didn't lump it forward and. Um, I felt I felt really at home, and and there was some really really good footballers, um, and I did feel that we got we got enough to 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 at least easily survive in the in, in the Premier League, and and if not, you know, push on for sort of like mid table. <laughs> yep, great strike, wasn't it? Um, yeah, somebody sent me a, a video of it the other day, actually, and uh, I got a bit of a bit of stick on social media about it. Red, absolutely pouring down with rain. I think Blackburn won the league that year, didn't they? Um, and I don't think we. I think I think we drew at their place and beat them at our place. And I remember beat, beating somebody with a ball. And I've, I've gone to strike it, and my left foot has just given way on the turf, and it's slipped, and it's sort of like spun off, and gone in the top corner. Uh, and I was laid on my back, and just I think I started kicking my legs in the air, something like that. It was, it was a bit slightly ridiculous, but but yeah, 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 I remember it well. I, I thought we'd had a really good start to the season. I, I, I might be wrong, but I think weren't we weren't we something like six or seventh at Christmas? You know, um, and and all of a sudden you you know you're looking forward and you're looking above you and you know at, you know and teams around you you know the bot the bottom relegation wasn't really even a consideration at that time, um, and then I think there were a few things that happened behind the scenes. I think we sold a couple of strikers and we didn't really replace them, and then I think one of the big Parts for me was Brian Gunn got that injury, um, and Andy Marshall came in uh, in goal. And for all I think, Andy Marshall was a good goalkeeper, and he developed into into a, a, a great goalkeeper. I just think it was probably a little bit early for him, um, and and then it, we just seemed to we just seemed to nose dive a little bit and. I just felt towards the end of the season, the end of the campaign, the last six or seven games, there were things that went off that, you know, you, 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 we just didn't have the rub of the green. You know, I think we, we hit the woodwork in probably three or four matches where what we got beat by the odd goal. And it, it, it was just as if the writing was on the wall. And no matter what you did, it, 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 it sort of like turned against you. We sold Mark Robbins, Efana Koku, um, and I think at the time we'd we'd then given debuts to Adi Akinbai and Jamie Curtin, who were 18, 19 year old lads, you know, and 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 again, both went on and, and, and Jamie still still is scoring goals, you know what I mean? Fantastic, but went on to have great careers and 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 you know played at a good level. But I think anybody would realise now that you know, to have to have two 18, 19 year olds leading the line in the Premier League is is a massive responsibility for them. I wasn't contemplating; um, just felt that we needed to dig in and we needed to grind some results out. And 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 again, I just felt that the tide the tide had turned a little bit, and and where we were uh, on occasions we were coming away from away games or coming away from Carrow Road, having got three points and thinking, "Wow, what a, what a great result that is." sort of as i say the tide had turned and and we were coming away thinking you know have we lost that game today you know i thought we were better we were the better team we created more chances and 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 yeah just felt that lady luck had just deserted us a little bit um 
I felt the club needed to 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 invest in in some players and, and to be fair the you know we did sign Ashley Ward who I thought was a great signing albeit I think it was a little bit a bit late in in getting him in there I think I think we needed something before that um and and then obviously the devastation of eventually being relegated it was he dislocated his his right ankle um which again fractured his his leg it was away at Nottingham Forest really bizarre circumstances again i think i think we played chelsea at home on the saturday and the following day we played nottingham forest away so we played two games in two days which you would just never do in these this day and age and there was a strike which went to his right hand side and i think he went down with his foot to to sort of like deflect it away and i think it must have caught the end of his toe and and sort of like snapped his foot back and um yeah devastating really because again you know i said about s some great players he, he 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 was as good as any goalkeeper i played in front of well he's he's around the place but he you know he'd, he'd had to have an operation to pin his his ankle i think and then he's you know he's, he's on crutches and so it's not it's not the same kind of thing, you know. He's coming in, but he's 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 in he's in having treatment, and you're not seeing him on a day to day basis, really. And and I think more than anything else, you're trying to g him up and and keep his spirits up when he was one of the characters in the dressing room that that kept everybody else's spirits up, you know. So I think yeah, I think that was a massive blow. I think we played Spurs away, and we got beat one nil, and I hit the post from about thirty yards. And I remember walking off and it was Ian Walker in goal and he came up to me, you know, you shake hands after the game and he said something like, you, you done me all ends up. I, I, I never got, I never even saw it. And it was things like that when I thought that could have easily just sneaked in off the post and we'd have got a point and, you know, um, and then we ended up going to Ellen Road and, and that, you know, obviously that was a big, big game for me. It was my return to Ellen Road after being, after leaving the club and I felt we, we were the better team. I felt like we dominated and, and we ended up getting beat 2-1 again and, you know, a bit of a penalty that was, you know, touch and go really. And again, just just one of those, one of those games that things just didn't go right for us. Uh, penalty, Ellen Road. Yeah, um, it was never a penalty. It was never a penalty and felt we should have quite easily got something out of the game um, and I think that was I think at the time the the bench was shouting at us get forward score a goal score a goal I think we were drawing one each, one each and it transpired that when we came in after the game a draw would have been all right for us um, so yeah yeah a bit Disappointing day, very disappointing. Massive occasion for me, uh, going back to the club, going back to a club that have, have got rid of you. So you want to make a statement, you know, you want to go back and say, you know what, you made a mistake selling me. Um, and then to go and get beat 2-1 and, and effectively like put a nail in the coffin was, was um, yeah, disappointing. But again, I think, I think we got enough. I felt we'd done enough on the day to get something out of the game, you know? What was that experience like against Villa at Carrow Road? Um, probably the worst day of in, in my football career, really. I think um, you know when the, the sort of like the final nail had gone in the coffin. Um, yeah, and and, and uh, just a, a feeling of um, that that you'd you'd let people down. You know, you'd let your your teammates down. You'd let your the supporters down. You'd let the club down. Um, yeah, tough, a, a tough day really. Obviously, delighted that that I was, you know, voted Player of the Season, and, and I felt like I'd I'd, I'd had a, a good season, probably my my best season in in my playing career, really, uh, in terms of um, you know the level that I'd attained, and and um, but it it papered over the cracks, really, of of the disappointment of of being relegated, and. Um, you know, I look back and yeah, yes, I've got fond memories of of being chosen. Um, but as I say, it, it, it doesn't 
it doesn't take away the 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 negativity and the um, the you know the 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 bad feeling of that you get from 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 such a such a drastic thing really because it is a massive massive um, hit to take really. It stays with you a long time. It stays with you a long long time, and um, I think the hardest part is is probably in the summer when you're you're on your break and you've got time to think about what's happened and the fixtures come out and you look at the fixture list and rather than play Man United and Liverpool and you know you play in other clubs that obviously aren't as big and as as bright and as you know as as, as um, appealing to you really um, and I think that's when it hits home um, and I got a decision to make as well then really because you know there were clubs that were coming for me the club were Norwich City were were very good in in keeping me abreast of of what had happened. Um, Robert Chase pulled me into the into the club one day and said um, Aston Villa had made a bid for me and he didn't want me to go, but he was leaving that down down to me, um, and I was happy to to stay at Carrow Road because I felt like I got some unfinished business really. Um, I felt responsible for partly for, for what had happened and um, and Robert Chase had said that you know we want we want to give it a real go next season we want we want to get back in the Premier League as fast as we can we're going to you know sign some players and we're going to give it a real go and, and I want you to be part of that and I was delighted to to, to commit to that and, and stay and and you know and hopefully you know have a good season and, and, and try and try and get that promotion. Uh, Villa, yeah, tough day. Um, I felt that the right. I felt that we'd got relegated the week before at Ellen Road. If I'm honest, um, I know this sort of like made it mathematically that w that we were down. But I, I, I actually felt that the week before at Ellen Road was when we when we got relegated and and that was that was where the pain was just not nice games to play football in really you know when you when you know you're down you just yeah you just you just want to draw a line under it great lad uh, got on well with with, with Ash um, yeah good good striker um, felt if we'd I, I, I feel if we'd have bought him a little bit sooner we could quite easy quite possibly have, have stayed up that season yeah yeah, I think I think when we when we offloaded Efan and, and and Robbo, we needed to replace them with with some you know the two young lads just couldn't carry the weight of of a Premiership team on the shoulders. I think it was unfair to expect them to do that, and have a 19 year old goal goalkeeper behind you at the same time. You know what I mean? It was it's a it's a lot of um, responsibility put on their shoulders really. So yeah, yeah, but yeah, good lad, Wardy. I'm not seeing him for a long time. I'm led to believe he's he's some TV star, isn't he? Um, but yeah, I'm not not seeing him for a long time. I think Gary Megson was caretaker at the time, um, and then there was talk that that Martin O'Neill was coming in, and um, I didn't know Martin O'Neill. I didn't, you know, I knew of him. Obviously, um, I knew he what, a, what an exceptional player he was, and that he'd won European cups, and you know, so was really looking forward to working under him um, and his staff because he brought a whole new staff in, and um, so so yeah, yeah, went into the start of the season um, on a really positive note, really thinking, you know, let's let's have a real go at this and. And see where it where it takes us. He was a bit of an unusual character, if I'm if I'm honest. Um, trying to put it nicely, he he came in and he was a bit bit um, sort of like, I don't know aggressive. Possibly is the right the the right word. He, he came in and he was a bit he was a bit distant with the players. There were things in pre season. Where he, I don't know, he just sort of like showed his teeth a little bit at times. I, I, you know, I remember, remember one day we were doing a run round the uh, round the lake at the university campus, and it was a red hot day, scorching hot day. There was dust flying everywhere, and we'd done this. I don't know if it was like a two or three mile run round. Got to the end, and we were all gasping for breath, and we we went to get the water bottles, and he 
banned us from drinking water. He said, you're not having a drink because when I did pre-season training, we didn't get a drink and then made us do the run again. And it was all a bit, a bit surreal really, you know? Um, and I think it was a bit like that, you know, even as the season went on, he, he, he was very, sort of like very extreme. Um, we didn't see him a lot on the training ground. The, the, the staff did, did a lot of the training. Um, it, in games, his pre-match and his post-match, uh, comments were very short and sharp, um, but if you won a game, it was like you know, like you'd won the won the cup. You know, it was like get beers on the bus. You know, everything's jolly. If you lost, you were the pits of the earth. You know, um, so it was quite extreme. You know, whether he's mellowed and changed, uh, you know, I don't know because obviously, you know, you look back in hindsight, he was probably cutting his teeth a little bit at the time. Um, so, so and, and also, you know, you don't know what the pressures from above were. Um, I do recall that halfway through that season, before he left, he pulled, pulled me to one side and, and told me that um, they'd had interest from uh, Tottenham Hotspur, were, were interested and made a call. And, um, and for no, nothing else, he was just, just informing me and keeping me in the loop, which I thought was really good of him, you know. I never, never worked under Brian Clough. I never, I, I was, you know, never really in his presence. But when I was at Leeds, I shared a room with Steve Hodge, who spent a lot of time under Brian Clough. And, and I just, I felt that Martin O'Neill had probably taken a lot from Brian Clough, a lot of the traits and, and, and implemented it himself. So, um, so yeah, but, but, you know, he knew his football, he knew, he knew, he knew good players, he knew how to win games of football. He obviously knew how to play the game the right way. And, and he's gone on and been, you know, massively successful, especially when he went to, to Leicester, I thought, you know, he did, he did, um, he did a, an amazing job there. Big game, uh, Luton away, live on TV, I think, um, you know, and you're thinking, right, we, we really want to make a, a statement. We want to go there and, and get a result and, um, and yeah, you know, scored two goals, um, one three one. I think I got man of the match. Um, couldn't have asked for for a better start, really. Um, and just one of those, just one of those days where um, things went right. You know, uh, I think I might be right. In, I think Danny Mills made his debut at right back. Um, obviously, went on to play, you know, unseen games for for England and. Um, and yeah, yeah, just one of those one of those days. We'd worked on a couple of things in in training. I thought one of the things about Martin O'Neill thought the set pieces that we did were fantastic. You know, um, the way that we set up for corners, attacking corners. We, effectively, it was me and Ashley Ward, and he just said, "It's you two, and it's a you know, it's a competition between you and the and the and the defenders. You know, if you want if you want to head the ball and and, and win that header more than they will, you'll score goals." And and it was a really simple corner routine but it, it, it generally tended to work that season is that i think that's i don't know if that's the first or the second goal but yeah the only the only day i scored two goals in a game in my career really so yeah big game i remember after the game i was interviewed on the pitch and and given the man of the match and all the all the norwich fans were behind us and all they were all singing and shouting and i think is it kev piper Kev Piper was the guy who was, who was interviewing me and who was obviously a mad Norwich fan as well. So it was smiles all around and, and we went in the dressing room and Martin O'Neill was, was delirious dancing around and, you know, it was, you know, we'd won, we won the cup. Do you remember, do you remember Neil Adams' goal that day? I think that was the third goal, was that through Perlow? Absolute stonker, yeah, from outside the box, sort of like outside of his right foot, he just like faded it in, yeah. Yeah, I remember. And their, their goal was a penalty. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's, it's amazing how you remember things like that, isn't it? Bizarre, really. So that season was going really well, and then I remember distinctly the game because it was just before the game at Leicester, which is of course where Martin went. So just, for you guys, I imagine it was just a whirlwind. How just recall what it was like at that point because it was a huge game as well, wasn't it? So and that was like on telly too. Yeah, it was, uh, and there'd been a there'd been a bit of a run up to before the game really there was a couple of things that had happened um 
you know, I'd, I'd, I'd been sort of like informed that the club were trying to cut back on uh, on finances and the thing, you know, things like when we went to away away games, we'd stay over the night before, and all of a sudden we were we were effectively like staying in bed and breakfasts, not not a hotel, and you know, there were a few things you could tell that Martin O'Neill wasn't happy with with what was happening above him, I think, um, and the the constraints that were being placed on him. And then we just got a whisper. Um, I think it was on the Thursday. We just got a whisper that. He was he was going, um, and we came in for training on the Friday, um, and I think he'd gone, and that was it. It was as quick as that, um, you know. And then we went to Leicester, played, you know, w- went out for the game, and and I think it was after the game that they announced that he he was he was taking over at Leicester. So football isn't it you know one one door closes another door opens and and you know you don't have time to to reflect really you just have to dust yourselves down and get on with the with, with what's in front of you can't recall who took us for the game um i know gary megson eventually came back in but i don't think i don't think meggy was there then um but but yeah i, I mean listen it, it disrupts it because you've got no pivotal, you've got no manager who's who's calling the shots. But when you cross that white line, you still play the same game, you know. So yeah, it is, it is disruptive. But you know, if you if you've been professional about it, you've, you've, you have to just just get on with the game, really. And and you know, you you you're paid to go out there and, and win football matches, and that's what you that's what you're wanting to do. And I think I think yeah, you know, recall that. I think we were we were leading, and I think they scored two or three goals in the last four or five minutes, which was a bit like the Alamo towards the end, really. Um, so yeah, t- yeah, tough day. I left in uh, I think it was March, just just before the deadline day, really. But there was a lot of talk, um, you know, for for a few weeks before that. Um, like as I say, Martin O'Neill had. Had, had sort of like kept me in the loop about stuff and then he went and Gary Megson came in uh, I think as caretaker to begin with and then I think they gave him the, they gave him the job um, I was close with, with, with Meggie um, obviously he was number two under John Dean um, I was an apprentice at Sheffield Wednesday when Meggie was playing so I knew him from, from those days as well uh, and and there was a lot of talk that the club were, were struggling financially and, and they were going to have to offload um, a couple of people and um, and I think I was earmarked that I was one of them and um, and, and and so yeah I mean you know you just got to carry on playing your football until until that happens really I think there was a bit of a bit of shenanigans from from the chairman really I mean at the end of the day I think I think the club was was struggling you know financially the, the club was was close to um, you know, going pop, I think, really. Um, and I think he was trying to get as much money in, in the door as he could. Um, and, and, and I later found out that um, Sheffield Wednesday had come in for me and he'd, he'd accepted a bid from Sheffield Wednesday and Tottenham had come in for me. Um, and he'd not accepted the same bid from Tottenham. He wanted more money off, to, off Spurs. Um, so I think he was trying to play one off against the other and that kind of thing. And then... Uh, I had a couple of days up in Sheffield where eventually I'd had agreed um, to move and sign for Sheffield Wednesday, and then it it came came knowledge that that Ashley Ward had gone as well. So um, I say I think he was just just trying to get as much money in as he could. To just you know head down, train, do the best you can on a Saturday. You know at the end of the day you might not go anywhere. You know, it might might just be rumor rumors, and you might not end up going anywhere. So, so you know, you're playing for Norwich City. You want you want the best for Norwich City, and and effectively, you know, you want to get as high in high in the table as you can. So, you, you know, you, you you're doing your utmost to to try and perform every week, and and if something changes, the the thing about football is it happens so fast and so quickly that you know when it does happen, it's a bit like a whirlwind, really. I was at home. I was at home. Um, I got a phone call at home from David Pleat to say, um, you know, is this John Newsom? Yeah, it's David Pleat, Sheffield Wednesday manager. Um, we've had a we've had an offer accepted by um, by Norwich City, and we'd like you to come up for talks. 
I said, right, okay. So I then rang my agent who was based in Manchester and we'd agreed to meet in uh, Nottingham. And um, so I set off on the way up to Nottingham and I got about, I think it was Newark we were meeting actually. I got about 10 miles from Newark and my phone rang, it was Gary Megson and, he, and it, it was a Wednesday, so it was our day off. And he said to me, uh, where are you? So I said, oh, I'm just meeting a friend in, in Newark because I didn't know if he knew anything or not. And he said, all oh, right, well, um, you know that the club have accepted a bid for you from Sheffield Wednesday. I said, well, I have been informed, yeah. And he said, right, well, the chairman wants to see you. I said, all oh, right, well, I'm, I'm like just meeting this friend in Newark. And he said, well, you won't go anywhere until the chairman's seen you. So I, I suggest you turn your car around and get, get yourself back to Norwich. So it was all a bit cloak and dagger, really. So, so I rang my agent and said, right, I've got to go back to Norwich, tell him the situation. And he said, well, I can't get down there because he got something on in that afternoon. Um, and my agent was a PFA, actually, so, so they, were, they were busy lads. Um, so I went back down, got all the way down to Carrow Road and met with Robert Chase. And the deal had been at the sort of like winding the clock back when, when he'd approached me about staying for, this, for the second season and said, I want you to stay. And I'd got a, a, a loyalty payment at the end of my contract. And he'd said to me, um, I want you to stay and, and I'll put a, a, a clause in the contract that if we sell you, we'll pay you the loyalty payment. I'm not, I can't give you any more money. I'm not giving you any more money, you know, but that's, that's the, the little sort of like cherry on top of the cake. So I said, right, that's fine. Yeah. You know, I'm happy to sign, to stay. And uh, so I went down and we had this discussion and he was trying to tell me how much money that he owed me because they, they owe you so much of your signing on fee and that kind of thing. And I, and I was like, I think you owe me a bit more than that. And he, and he was adamant that he wasn't. And we, we sat in the boardroom for probably two hours and he was coming up with all these ideas of well we'll pay you this money and we'll pay the tax and we'll you know and i kept ringing my agent and my agent was saying don't don't accept that because it'll be a class as a benefit in kind and this and the other and, and it all got a bit 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 funny really and and eventually i i got a copy of my contract off him and i went through the contract and i found this clause that he'd, he'd put in and he stormed out of the boardroom and I think the club solicitor came walking in and said, right, um, we agree that this is what we owe you. Um, get yourself off to Sheffield uh, and we, you know, we may see you again, something like that. And that was it. That was the, he never came in and shook my hand or said, you know, all the best, thank you, or whatever it might have been. Um, and off I went. Off I went, I went up to Sheffield, uh, I had talks the following day and uh, we didn't really agree anything. And then on the Friday morning, we went back and eventually signed. You've, you've gone, you've gone, you know. Um, I can't remember if, I mean, it was a bit, like I said, it was a whirlwind really because we went for talks on the Thursday and we didn't really agree on anything at Sheffield Wednesday. And then he said, I'll oh, come back Friday morning and we knew Spurs were interested. And, and I think it was Jerry Francis who was at Spurs and he was saying, we're not, we're not paying two million quid when you've agreed 1.6 for Sheffield Wednesday. And there was this big sort of like debate and, and a bit of a, a bit of a messy scenario really between the club. And then I went back on Friday morning, ended up signing, um, but then realized, you know, I've not done any training for three days. So, the following day, Sheffield Wednesday got Aston Villa at home and I was playing. So it was it's sort of like start afresh, you know? Um, so I, I just remember going up to the training ground on the Friday and I did some, some running and some fitness work to try and just get myself, you know, ready for, for the Saturday. Came in at, at Hillsborough on the Saturday at half past one, quarter past one, met my new teammates and effectively you've sort of like drawn a line under where you were and and you know you, there's no point looking backwards you just look forwards again and um 
I never actually, I never, I never went back to Norwich. Um, next picture, Ipswich Town. Um, John Walk. Yeah, absolute legend. Um, I think that's the one that we beat them 2-1. I think, whether that's the caption or not, I think that may well be just before I score the goal. Um, didn't really appreciate how um, how how vicious the rivalry was between Ipswich and Norwich until I went to Norwich. And even now I'm back in Sheffield and we've got Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United, Steel City derbies and all that kind of thing. And I say to people, trust me, you've not witnessed anything so you've seen, you know, what we call it the tractor derby sort of thing. It was, yeah, yeah, it was vicious. Um, and then to score a goal and for us to win the game in bizarre circumstances, really, when I think they, it was a mistake by me. There was a ball through and I went to control it and it popped over my foot. Um, and he gave a penalty and then changed his, changed his mind and gave an offside decision, which I don't think went down very well, but hey, three points. I've been back a few times since. Um, I love the place, you know, my daughter was born down there, so it's got a, a you know, I've got a special um, place in my heart for it, really. Um, been down, been down a few times and I, I usually go down on a, uh, round about September and play on a, um, on like a charity golf day that, that somebody who, who I know organises down there. So I generally tend to get down there once a year now. I was married at the time. My daughter was born in the Royal Norfolk and Norwich. Um, and so when I came to Sheffield on the Wednesday evening, um, signed on the Friday, played on the Saturday, um, that was it. I, I, that was it. I stayed in Sheffield. And uh, my wife and my daughter then came to join me in Sheffield. Um, a couple of weeks later, uh, we were in a hotel. And we had to, you know, we put the house up for sale in, in Norfolk and, or in Norwich. And um, when that went through, got all the stuff brought up and, and, and just sort of like made, made a new home up here. So that's what I say, it, it really it happened so quickly. You don't have time to, to sort of like reminisce really, you, you know, it's, it's you, you, you start in a new venture and, 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 and then you've got that repetition of, you know, you've got a, a big transfer fee, you've got that, you know, you want to you want to go out and play and, and do well and, and try and make people proud that, you know, or, or feel that they've got value for money. So, you, you know, that cycle starts again. Sheffield Wednesday fan from being phew, six year old, I think was my first game. I went with my brother and my dad. Um, and, and you know, yeah, I was an apprentice here. I uh, signed pro, I, did, I got two years pro, I made my debut for Sheffield Wednesday and, and, th and then went to Leeds. So, so yeah, I felt like I was, I was coming home in some respects, um, but equally, you know, um, if, if there had been a deal to go to Spurs, um, I, you know, obviously I'd have quite happily uh, I'd have gone down there as well so uh, and, and the bizarre circumstances of on the Friday after I'd signed at Sheffield Wednesday we came out of the um, the offices at, at Hillsborough and there are the offices at Hillsborough are like underneath the stand so there's no phone signal so as we came out my agent's phone beeped he got an answer machine message it was Jerry Francis who'd said um, Norwich City have agreed 1.6 million so get yourselves down to Spurs. But it was too late, I'd already signed, so. So yeah, that was uh, Mr. Chase, obviously trying to get his, as much money for the club as he could, really. I'm still keeping in touch with a couple of lads, um, Gunny especially, um, and, oh, and always, always watch for, you know, the results and um, Nigel Worthington, who I played with at Sheffield Wednesday, went down there as manager and did a great job and they got into the Premier League again. And so, so yeah, I've, I've got a real, real soft spot for, for Norwich. And I, and I think like most players, you know, for every club that you played for, you, you've got an affinity and you've got a, a soft spot for them, you know. And, um, but, but yeah, I, I, you know, I love my time down at Norwich and um, I look, look back on it in, with fond memories, Apart, even though you know it was 
not a successful first year with the relegation, but you know, I still love my time down there. Your Norwich City hero. Um, wow. Brian Gunn, I think. Gunny. Um, I had massive amounts of respect for him before I went down there, obviously with what had happened in his private life with his daughter and that kind of thing. Larger than life character, great guy. Made me really welcome when I went down there. Um, yeah, top man, top man. He's my, yeah, if, 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 I would say he's the guy. Tell us something we don't know about your Norwich spell. Wow. I think I've just told you everything there, haven't I? Um, the players lounge at Norwich City was the best players lounge in the country. So as a captain, it, it was massive, this lounge. And we used to get 250 tickets for the players lounge. So as a captain, we used to, I used to get 50 tickets for the away team. And we all got 10 tickets each. So, or 40 tickets for the away team. So what we used to do was we'd say to the opposition, do we get tickets at your players lounge? And they'd say, no. So we'd say, right, you don't get any for ours. So we, so, and it was like, it was like a big social event after the game. And we went in one, one day and, uh, and like, you know, your parents were there, my wife was there, her parents were there, the kids were there. We had a crash in there so the kids could play. And the, it was fantastic. And we walked in one day and take that was sat there. Exactly. Yeah. And take that was sat in our players lounge um, and they'd, they'd, they'd rented a house in, in Norwich somewhere and Gunny, of all people, had invited them to the game. So yeah, that, that's one for you. When did it nearly end early for you at Norwich? Um, I think as I touched on a bit earlier at the end of the, the season when we got relegated and um, uh, Brian Laws was manager of Aston Villa and he'd come in for me um, and they'd made an offer and, and, and Robert Chase said, no, I want you to stay and want you to give it, give it a go next season. And as I've said earlier, yeah, I was happy to do that. Your favourite Norwich City moment or memory? Um, Probably, one of them was probably scoring the brace at Luton. I think that was that was up there with as as you know as happy as I've I've been. Um, walking out at at Stamford Bridge as the captain on my first on my debut. I think that was as um, you know that was a poignant moment for me. That was a, a proud proud time and a proud moment for me so those two who do you miss and why oh wow um, who do I miss I miss playing really so you miss miss the the supporters you miss everything about it um, who do you miss as an individual Ooh, I find that impossible to answer really you know um i think when you play you play as a professional footballer your sounds bizarre but the the changing room has, has effectively got like a revolving door on it because there's people coming and going all the time and i always think that you you make you make a lot of acquaintances in football but i think the cliche is you, you know you can count your, your real friends on one hand and you know, so so lots of lots of people who, who it's great to catch up when you bump into them or or you know you come across them again, but to pick one out is is impossible, I think, for me. Who don't you miss and why? <laughs> uh, who don't I miss from my time at Norwich? Um, probably get shot for this, but Martin O'Neill thought we had a bit of a a bit of a love-hate relationship and I think there was a lot more hate than, than love. Um, I respect him for what he did and, 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 and what he's gone on to do, but I think at the time we were, we were a little bit at loggerheads. So, um, yeah, probably getting bothered for that. My Norwich City regret. Um, 
that we didn't do enough to stay up the first season, you know, relegation. You know, it's a big stain on 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 your career. It's a stain on on you as an individual. It was the the worst experience of my footballing career, seconded only by probably having to retire through injury. So, so yeah, I wish I wish we'd I wish we'd have possibly just done things a little bit different. And and I wish the club had had seen the foresight to invest what they needed to at the time. And I think. The annoying bit is I think we were good enough to stay up, easily good enough to stay up. Um, I think that's the difficult part. Was the grass greener? Um, no, don't think it was. Don't think it was, I think. Um, but I didn't leave because I felt the grass was greener, you know. I left because I had to leave, basically. Um, I would say my time at Norwich City was was as enjoyable if not I play I think I played the best football of my career at Norwich City so um, I loved my time there and and when I moved to Sheffield Wednesday it you know although it you know it, it was okay it was good I enjoyed it it didn't really um, take off in the manner that I wanted it to you know I think the club was going in a different direction to the, to, to the one I thought I was joining. Um, so no, no, I don't think the grass was greener. A message to Norwich City fans. Um, I would just say, just love your time in the Premier League. You've, you've, you've just, just done so, so well getting there this season. Um, I had a great rapport with them when I was down there. They've got a special place in my heart. Um, and you know, just it was it was just a lovely, lovely time of my career. So thank you. I think I would nominate Brian Gunn. Yeah, I'd love to see um love to see what Gunny's got to say about it all. <laughs>